A little pocket money. <laughs> and this wraps up week six of championship bowling here at Brunswick. Hi, I'm Cliff Gable, along with Bruce Hopkins, and we'd like to welcome you back to week seven of championship bowling here at Brunswick Lanes. Bruce, uh, the first round turned out to be just what we had thought it was going to be. It turned out to be down to the last frame. The bowling was real close. We had a, a fantastic first round, I thought. I think we did, too. Uh, we had some exciting matches in there. A lot of them, as you said, came right down to the end. We had some good scores. Uh, a 283 double, a 171 single. Uh, a couple of guys needed marks in their last boxes to uh, advance. And for the 12 guys that did advance, I'm sure they're enjoying this tournament. So. <laughs> yeah, they all had a great time, I think. They made a little bit of extra money to help along with their expenses. Uh, they're looking forward to the extra money they're going to make here in the second round. So I guess without... Uh, Delaying it any further, we'll get into week seven, and uh, we have some real good bowlers coming up this week. Yeah, on this week, we have four more. We're going to follow the same format as we did the previous six weeks, uh, and today we're going to be looking at uh, Miles DeViller, Sean Wells, Jeff Baker, and Barry Peterson. So I expect a good, the, tight match here. The boys are ready, so we'll get underway. First up today is Miles DeViller. For you people that uh, didn't get chance to see first round, I'll run through some stats on Miles again. Miles is a local boy from Yarmouth here. By trade, he's a meat cutter. He's uh, been bowling for 15 years. He bowls here at the Brunswick Lanes, I believe. And uh, his current average is 111. Miles has an all-time high single of 159 and a high triple of 402. Miles qualified for this uh, tournament with a triple of 368. I think he had to work at that too. Uh, I think he uh, qualified more than once. Yeah. To, uh, <laughs> well, or, or attempted to qualify more than once. His uh, normal, her normal triple would have been a 333, so he did come in above his average, So, and I'm sure that he did work kind of hard at that. He wanted to make sure he was going to get here. Yeah. And Miles started off with a nine and uh, has a, the four horsemen and the nine pin in back, a wood sticking out between one and two. Could, uh, could help him a little bit. It sure did. Well, there's our first mark of the day. Right in on that head pin. That was a nice shot by Miles. Again, you were talking about that dead wood laying in between, and that can be a tricky thing. That You never know where it's going to go, and in that case, it did help him. Well, dead woods can make or break you. You, know, you need them for some shots. Uh, other shots, you, you hit them wrong, or they're not laying just right, and then they hurt you. Our next bowler is Sean Wells. Sean lives in Kelly's Cove. He's 31 years old. He's a correctional officer here in Yarmouth. He's been bowling for 16 years. He bowls in three different leagues. He currently has an average of 119. And I'm sure that's not the way Sean would like to have started off. He <laughs> punched two to the right, and uh, the next two balls followed right through. So he's going to he's going to pick up very quickly, I'm sure. And there he is, right and back on the strike. Right so that's back. A, a, a good way to do it. If you have a bad one and you come right back and slap a good one in there, then you forget all about that one, that one that you started off with. Sean, Sean did a fine job. That was a real nice strike on by Sean. This is Jeff Baker. Jeff lives in Arcadia. He's a new dad. Yeah. They tell me, <laughs> and uh, I'm sure we got some proud grandparents. There are some past bowlers from around this area, Joan and and George and George yeah. Baker. Yes. Jeff is 31 years old. He works at the skating rink. He's been bowling for 20 years. Bowls in one league at this time. Has a current average of 119. He has a 
an all-time high single of 194 and a high triple of 455. He qualified for this tournament with a triple of 390. And on his, and he was in the first week bowling. He been, hasn't been around for a while, and he had a good match. He had a 272 with a 145 single. Um, and there's another nice strike. big strike. So uh, I'm sure he is uh, looking forward to having possibly another big match like that again. Well, aren't they all? <laughs> <laughs> So we got three bowlers who've marked up on the second box. And now here's our fourth bowler, and that's Barry Peterson. Barry is from Chabog Point. He's 45 years of age. He's a service manager at the Stars Road Irving. Been bowling for 11 years. He bowls in one league at the present time. He has a current average of 116.5. Has an all-time high single of 170, a high triple of 410. And a spare for Barry. Barry qualified for this tournament with a triple of 390, and I think Barry's another one of these guys that really worked at this to get into this tournament. The interest was there this year. They really was looking forward to... Well, there was a lot a lot of other bowlers around who didn't get in last year for one reason or another. And uh, after they saw what it was, they wanted in. So they were here. <laughs> well, Barry comes in with a nice eight on that spare, and... Two open pins, which you really want to split to make sure. But you can get them out there, too. And another spare. Well, so Barry started off with two marks. Well, these guys are going right after one another. They've all got marks to start. And that's a that's a good way to, that kind of relaxes you a little bit. You get your first mark early. That's for sure. The opening eight alleys, we have five marks on the board there already. So I think Miles, the, right in the pocket. The boys are out to... Uh, Show no mercy, I believe, in this game. Well, it's getting nearer the big money and uh, or the bigger money. These guys, uh, if they advance, when they advance, will be receiving fifty dollars. He's got a well. If he gets a little bit high on that wood over to the right there, right? Well, it just slid off of the other two. It he wasn't solid enough to push it back and push it sideways both. So. He definitely moved that wood around a lot there. We've got a piece of dead wood rolling out there that I think is going to have to be removed. You have to wait till it well, comes to a complete stop because <laughs> it may roll back in again. There it is. It's rolling back at this time. It's I back think to the edge of the plate now, so it's going to be legal wood. There's a line out there, as we mentioned some weeks before, two feet out from the center of the head pin. If the dead wood comes out, and touches that line or goes a little bit beyond it or all be all the way past it, then it's taken out. So Miles has a nine, he's 35 on three. So as long as the deadwood is touching that line out there, just a little bit, just the edge of it, or the end of it, uh, it comes out. a time when the pin boys would pick those up and throw them <laughs> in the pit. <laughs> yeah, go get your own now. Yeah, that's right. It's uh, and then they then they say we advance, eh? Yeah, <laughs> machine age. <laughs> Four in a row. Got outside, but a little solid on the head pin. Like to remind the viewers that if they have any comments or anything that they think might be of help or. Constructive criticism, as I said weeks back, you know, uh, feel free to drop into uh, the Brunswick Lanes uh, Cable 5 TV and uh, let us know about them. You know, we're always looking for suggestions. Uh. Well, we're always looking to improve, that's for sure. So, Sean's bowling on his strike now and he has a good eight pin drop. Uh, bins are open. He should be able to go right down and split those. I mentioned earlier that Sean has a current average of 119. He has an all-time single of 179, an all-time triple of 407, and Sean Wait qualified for this tournament at 383. And that was a nice pickup there for his spare. Stay away from the dead wood. As long as your pins are open, uh, a bowler should go after the pins. So you, uh, you don't really want to mess around with dead wood if you don't have to. I've got away from him, but he got four on his spare. And he's 36 on three. Right on that shot, right in the good split. 
And got all except the three pin. And takes his 10. So he's 46 on the four. In my opening remarks, I neglected to let the people know that uh, Subway and Red Knight Enterprises are the sponsors of this tournament, and uh, we certainly appreciate all their effort that they've put into There's sponsoring double this. Strike. And that's our first uh, bonus money earned here this week. Jeff, Jeff Baker with a nine and double strike. And this is where your scores really start to, to go up. With a double strike, you got 20 uh, already accumulated on the first strike, plus this first ball. And he's right back in that pocket again, a little solid. So he gets 26 out of a, a possible 30. So that, that's a good box, you know, uh, you get up the high. So he's got 35 on two. He's still got this strike to roll off. He's got 10 for it so far, and what he gets with the first two balls. So he'll be going down on that deadwood. Hit it in the middle, took a shore eight on it, so that's 18, which gives him 53 on three. Now he'll go on the other side. Stays right there and takes a nine for 62 on four. So he's off to a good start. Jeff jumped out into just a little bit of a lead there at this time, so. What we would call an early lead. Yes. Lots of bowling still to come and uh, Lots of room for the boys to catch up. Barry Peterson started off with two spares. Right back, back in, in that the pocket, pocket with again. a big nine. So he's made both of his spares count, an eight and a nine. He's got the left-hand corner pin. And, yeah. Uh, that Deadwood is it, moving, Bruce. It still hasn't settled down there. Uh, looks like he's got to get out high on the nose, up on the right-hand edge of it. Straighten it out. Yes, not quite on the nose, but up on the end of it. So Barry has some bonus money with three spares in a row. Right back there again. There's a seven or 54 on three. Now, well, he's got potential there. If he gets down on the left on that front pin of the two, uh, things could go flying to the right. Don't think he wanted to stay out there on that. And has a nine, and as you said, uh, or we said, an early lead. So now Barry has 63 on four, Jeff 62, Sean Wells 46, and Miles 43. Now we'll see if Miles can get started again. All right, he's got a couple extra pins, so now he's got the one two, which is the head pin and the, the one just immediately behind it to the left. Right on the head pin. nice ball in there with a big nine These guys are really making their marks pay for yeah. them right now we're watching miles bowler he's a what we call a three-step bowler very short steps and rolls a bit of an in shoot that means the ball goes from left to right and he pins on the five so he's got two in a row right now we're bowling better than 50 percent marks here yeah. for the alleys bowl today so this is any indication of what we're going to have today. We should have some more big scores here today. There's a nine pin drop uh, for Sean Wells. Leaves the six pin wide open. Right on it. 
So the guys aren't leaving any pins on the plate down there. No, they're really making it count today. Uh, they're not wasting any energy. They're only going to roll one or two balls, most again, of them. <laughs> again, what we're doing is we're bowling a, a two, two round match here today. The total pinfall is what counts. Uh, two will advance, two will drop out. The two today that advance will advance into the semifinal round. He'd like to head the edge of that deadwood, I think, uh, um, where the three are, and uh, he'd have got his three probably and uh, and flipped the wood around. But he takes a nine, and Sean is 70 on six. Here's Jeff. He's 22 over par after he's four with his double strike. Right and back another strike. on it. This is three strikes that Jeff has had so far in five alleys, so he's on top of his game, I think, today, Bruce. One of the things years ago when we used to go in a tournament, the fellow would do something like that, come back, we'd tease him a little bit, say, yeah, but you haven't got a spare today at all. You have no spare. <laughs> and I don't think you really care when you get strikes like that. No, I don't think so. <laughs> well, that wood's coming out. Oh, it's going to stay away from it. won't hurt him. He's got the three, six, ten, and uh, the five in there. So, uh, yeah, it's a little triangle with the corner pin. So you want to get into that triangle, one side or the other. That, oh, that looked like it was going to. There, there it did. <laughs> Took a little while, but it went. <laughs> and it was well hit. Uh, he was in where he yeah, wanted to be. It, it, I thought it was going to go right off the bat, the so way he, he hit it. <laughs> But I'm sure he'll, he's happy to take it the way it went. So Jeff is now 92 on six and open with a spare. And here's Barry. He's sticking right close to Jeff. They're only one pin apart after four. There, you got the, instead of having the four horsemen, you got three in a row now. And uh, you got a lot better chance of getting those three than sometimes getting the four. Barry squeezed that one a little bit. Uh, more than he would have liked to. I tend to do that once in a while. Hang on to it a little bit longer and you want to. There he is. That's what he was looking for. So after five, Barry is 73. pin for his third ball. Barry's a, a three-step bowler. As we watch him, he stands there with his left foot slightly ahead and then takes his three strides up to the line and takes his ten. Again, as we said earlier, there's not too many pins being left on the plate today. Oh, after six, Miles the Villar 72 and open on his spare, which he's going to bowl off right now. Sean Wells is 70, Jeff Baker is 92, and Barry Peterson is 83. So we've got four good scores up there. They're all up and over. They're all above average on their on their scores right now. Six on his miles spare, so that puts him up to 78 on six now. Right on it. Nice right spare. On it. Good. That nice little, spare. Little bunch of four that's there. It's a triangle with one in back, and uh, has to be hit just right. He's hanging tough. He's had four marks in his set first seven boxes. All spares. And he's made them pay. Six, seven, and nine so far. And as I say that, <laughs> we have a punch. But he's 20 over par on seven. That old Murphy's Law comes up and grabs you, doesn't it? <laughs> I can't believe we put the jinx on all those fellas when we say things like that. <laughs> Ooh, he's out there on the end where I like the shot and just a little bit thin. Got a little bit of action from those pins falling. Took a couple more than what he had thought he was going to get, but that that's the name of the game. That's that Deadwood moving around down there for you. And has a 9 for 99 on 8. 
Now Sean's got to get going. He's had a, a strike with a spare on it and another spare. Made one of his spares uh, with a four and the other with a five. Ooh, and he oh. goes through the middle. And he, he leaves the two, four, seven, the three, six, ten, and the five pin in the middle. And normally a shot like that will take that five out, but this time didn't. Well, you're better off with it there, I think, if you're going to have a chance yeah. to spare at all. Helps uh, fill in a little bit there and a little more movement. Whichever side you choose to go to, uh, it'll help the pins roll around, move around a bit. So he comes up with a decent eight there. Uh, here's the alley. I always like to see a fella get a mark, unless he's bowling against me, of course. In the eighth <laughs> alley, you're ready. You're sitting there waiting to go up to your last two. You're ready to go home and get a mark. And, and there that's he just what he did. Yep. That's just what he did. He come up with that big strike. That ball seemed to slip a little bit out of his hands and hit the alley a little hard, harder than normal for Sean, but it worked well for him. I think he played it that way. <laughs> He'll tell us that anyway. Yeah. Uh, Jeff's open on a spare. Back in that pocket with a oh. big nine and little body English trying to get that five pin, but a good nine. And shouldn't have any trouble with that. He stays to the right of the red on the deadwood there. Right on the pin. So Jeff has three in a row for some bonus money. So that's his second trip to the bonus this game. He had a double strike earlier, and now he has a strike and two spares in a row. So. And we might add, too, that in that seventh frame when Miles got his spare, that was a, a bonus, bonus money strike. for him. Yes, so. it was. We kind of forgot that. So we have, we have, we get involved in the scores and talking about how well they're doing. Oh, <laughs> well, we got it marked down there, though. We won't <laughs> let him go. So six on that spare. Jeff is 117 on seven, and he's got the four horsemen. Oh, out a little thin. Just a little thin. Leaves himself the left-hand corner. Right now, Jeff has kind of broke away from the pack a little bit here. And a 10 for 127 on eight. So he's aiming at 140 plus. And uh, if I remember right way back in, in week one, he ended up at 145. So he's just continued right on where he was. He certainly has. He's uh, weeks ago. He's doing really well in this tournament. And I think if I'm not mistaken, last year, Jeff uh, kind of went out in the first round, didn't he? Second round. Second I think he round. Made it yes, second that's round right. You're right. Top, yeah. He did. And uh, but still, you know, uh, I think he's aiming for the big money this year. He's Got something that could go here with a piece of wood. Oops. I think you would like to try to get up on the, the right hand edge of the nose of that dead wood. <laughs> <laughs> and I already called him on the lob line. And Barry so lost takes a seven. Check the telescope, make sure that's what they're doing. Yep. We might mention to the viewers that that whistle they just heard is uh, Gerald Tebow, the manager here at Brunswick Lane, sits partway down. He lanes on a chair. He has the hardest job in this whole tournament, I think. He's 10 feet down the line where the lob line is, and if the ball is in the air when it goes past that line, Gerald will blow the whistle on him, and they lose the pins that they knock down. If it's on the first ball, they can reset and roll the next two balls. If it's on the second and third ball, then they lose the pins that they knock down. So like if they knocked, uh, if they got a spare on the second ball and it was a lob ball. Uh, all they would get was what they knocked down with the first ball. Four, you punched out two and then spared it, but it was a lob ball. You'd get two for that box. And that that hurts. It has a psychological effect on the bowlers. And I know uh, in previous weeks there we had uh, an incident where Reg Fowler had that problem was in one of his games where he went over the foul line three times, and it kind of shook him up there. The lob line, it was. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. We haven't had foul line problems yet. I'm sorry, I said foul line. We've I meant lucky the that lob way line. That, uh, That's right. The guys aren't using the foul line. And uh, we might add, too, that uh, there is a buzzer attached to that foul line, and if they slide over that foul line... You hear the buzzer, and, and the that light works, comes on. And, and it actually works basically the same principle as the lob line. If it's the first ball, they can reset. If it's a second or third, they lose anything that they get on that ball. And those are both, uh, they're not tournament rules, they're bowling rules. Yes. Those are rules that uh, all bowlers should observe at all times. And Miles takes a seven, and he's 106 on nine. There is a rule book for bowling. 
Uh, I know they have one here at Brunswick Lanes. Everybody doesn't get one, but uh, if you need to check rules, uh, the book is here. The staff can produce it and show you what you want to know. And nice there's big a strike. strike for Miles in the tent. You can use that. So Miles still out there fighting and going to make a game of it right down to the last ball. So he's 116 and he's got two more balls working for him. He has a possible 136 if he strikes out. And we've seen one of those. Yes. Triple strike. Greg yes. McGray had one uh, a few Couple weeks ago. Week, yeah. That was uh, exciting. I think that's the first one we've seen yeah. in, in, since the tournament started. So we're into our second year of this tournament and uh, seems to be getting bigger and better. And a 17 for a 123 for Miles. So he's off to a good start. And can't complain about 123. Sean Wells is 88 and open on his strike. Uh, what we call a skinny hit on the head pin on the left hand side of it, but uh, I think he has a good shot at a spare there. That did would uh, if he stays up on the left hand end of it. Well, just to the bit of the red. Uh, he didn't want to go down there. He had to stay up on at least on the red or a little to the left of the red to push everything straight through. So he got nine on his strike and a 10 box. So he's 107 on nine. So he, he'd like to have another mark to stay even with Miles. Got that one out there pretty good. Left the 3 2, the 3 6 10 and the 4 7. Makeable. Uh, Wood could help him. Get it down in the pocket it's of down that the three split. and six. Yeah. Sure, he didn't want to go there. Now you go after a couple more and end up with a decent score. Good nine. And that's 116 for Sean. Jeff Baker, at this point in his game, after eight boxes, is 127. over to the left. Still has quite a group of six pins there. Uh, get back in that right-hand pocket again with the wood in behind will help on the two back pins. Well, he got outside yeah. of it and still. But Big spare. I think the wood made uh, help make that spare a little easier because uh, it was covering the nine and ten pin. Drop that one awful close to the gutter. <laughs> and he's going to come out of it with a six. I'm sure he's pleased with that, considering that he thought it might go in the gutter. Yeah, he, he dropped it down, and uh, it was awful close to the edge of the, of the foul line and, and where the gutter starts. Well, he's going to be a 150-plus. And a good 10 for a nice game. 1-5-3. Had six marks. He had a double strike. Then he had a strike and two spares in a row. Then he just had his last spare there for I, a 153. I think that's getting right up in there with the top, one of the top uh, singles of this tournament, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 171 Brian Dion had early in the tournament. That's probably the second best one we've had. Barry Peterson has an even hundred after eight. Barry having a little trouble catching, catching that. Got one more game. He's allergic to the middle of the alley that time, so he has yeah. to take a six. Oh, Barry's 106. He'd like to have a mark now. Get him up there with somewhere between Sean and Miles. Seemed to be kind of off balance on that one. Slipped a little, I believe, on his approach.
Should have a couple here if he hits the head pin. And takes all three of them for a nice 10. So he also has 116. So after game one in this week seven, we have uh, Sean Wells and Barry Peterson with 116 each. Miles DeViller with 123, and Jeff Baker leading the pack with a 153. That put Jeff out there a little bit in uh, in the lead, uh, give him a good comfortable buffer zone, but... You don't want to get too comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we saw that the other day. I was talking to Brian Dion after he rolled that 171, and that, that was his exact words. He says, I've, I got this nice lead. He says, I, I got comfortable, but I got a little too comfortable, and... Got some wood down there. He's got to, he's got to go over to the left. Uh, push that one back on the corner pin and make the other one go over there. And the ball took off. If the ball could have stayed down, and it's hard to keep it. Well, you can't keep it down when it hits wood like that because they just, uh, they sail, they take off, and it went right over the top of the dead wood. It was a hard shot, but he comes out with ten. So for those of you that might be just joining us, you're watching Championship Bowling here at Brunswick Lanes, brought to you by Subway and the Red Knight Enterprises. If you happen to be out in the Stars Road area, drop in and say hi to the folks. Um, let them know that you are watching the Championship Bowling and, and what your comments might be on it. I'm sure they'd be more than happy to hear those. And yeah. while, while you're there, have a have a meal or something, so. <laughs> We've got a shot down there now. He hasn't got much dead wood to work with as far as flipping the pin. I mean, the two two pins are covered well, but you got to make that uh, wood come off the wall. So he wants to stay out on the left-hand end of it. Yes. And didn't right. get the action It came out a little bit, wall. but not enough to get the five pin. And he has a nine for 19 after two in his second game. Just maybe of a little interest, uh, people are looking at the pins down there, how close they are, how much room there is down there and everything. And this is Sean Wells, by the way. Uh, the plate is 56 inches wide from one wall to the other wall. And the pins only take up four, 41 inches. So there's 15 inches on either side, like seven and a half inches on each side of the pins, uh, where the gutters are, which are, are a lot shallower than they used to be. And uh, so there's a lot of room down there to, to throw your ball and have the pins work. So, you know, you gotta have some luck. Uh, you gotta be hitting them, of course, but you need some luck to make the pins move over in that area. One of the bits of information that you gave a couple weeks ago, Bruce, was the fact that there is 12 inches of space in between each of those pins, which I never realized. It doesn't um, look it from here. No, it certainly doesn't. And the pins are 15 and 3 quarter inches long, so when a pin falls over, it's, it's got to hit the other pin. It's in line with it. So it isn't like... Uh, but they will fall down in between and not touch anything. But the, the, what you're saying is the, the, the pin is longer... That was the space. space. Yeah. 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 And Sean starts off with a seven and a nine. Jeff Baker, let's see if he's going to stay hot. Good off a little kick bit. There. Gets that kick and helps there add to it. <laughs> now he's got the four horsemen on the right. One, three, six, and ten by number. Deadwood stuck in between the last two there. Should help. But only if he hit the head pin. <laughs> <laughs> Got a good ten. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank St. Jerome's restaurant out on uh, in the uh, Yarmouth Hall for supplying the food for the uh, workers here today. Uh, it's very nice of them, and uh, we certainly appreciate it. Yes, we most certainly do. And uh, while we're passing out uh, those kind of compliments, uh, Brunswick Lanes and the Viking Cable uh, should not be forgotten. They've both been uh, a big help to this. If it wasn't for the, the Bowling Alleys, we wouldn't have a tournament. If it wasn't for Viking Cable, we wouldn't be showing it to you. That's right. And I uh, want to re you know, mention the, the workers. They're all volunteers and thank them for their hours of uh, oh. work. <laughs> <laughs> 
Jeff trying to help that one down a little bit. He had a tough shot, and he, and he had, the, I think it was the four pin there. He, he hit it on the right-hand side. He went off the wall and came back and, and gave that uh, right-hand corner pin a good rock. So Jeff starts off with a couple of tens. I don't think he expected it uh, when he first hit the thing, but after he started to work for it, he was doing a little body work out there trying to help it along. So we've gone... Uh, Six boxes here haven't had a mark yet. A little different the first game. Yes, it certainly is. Uh, perhaps they used them all up in that first <laughs> game. Now, Barry's got a drop there with a 136 and the five pin hit in behind there. Could go if he splits them. That first game out of 30 alleys, we had 18 marks, so yeah. it was better than 50% of the boxes rolled were marks. Cuts out the head pin and takes an eight. Just to remind the folks that this is the second game of week seven. Uh, we take a total pinfall of both games. The two highest scores will advance into the semifinal round. We're cutting our, our numbers in half each time we go. We started with 24 bowlers. We're now down to 12. When uh, these three rounds, nice spare, nice spare. He had the one, two, and the seven, ten, and split the two really nice. And got it. Uh, as I was saying, we we split in half, and we're down to twelve. Uh, after three weeks of this round, we'll be down to six, and then it changes a little bit with the six bowlers we have in the semifinals. We only eliminate two, and those four go on to our skin scheme. And that smiles in the pocket. And that is certainly what all these bowlers are striving for is that skins game because there's $900 up for grabs in that, in those games. And uh, now, Miles has got a shot there. He's got the 510 and the wood, but uh, I think you've got to stay to the left of that five pin, the middle one. Up that's there. just what he did. Oh, Cut it a little, a little too thin. Because I think if he had gone the other <laughs> side, you would have flipped the wood away from the 10 pin. Yeah. And uh, if he'd have stayed on the other side where he was, uh, it was going to put it right over there on the 10 pin. So he takes his 10, so 29 on three. He almost made himself a nice spare. Tried real hard for it. He certainly did. on the seven pin. We just saw that spare made here a little while ago by Barry. And Miles was off of the head pin to the left again. So he leaves himself the, the 110. And takes an eight. And Miles is 37 on four after having bowled 123 his first first game. Well, this is Sean Wells. Sean started a little bit rough with a seven and a nine, so he's going to need that big ball in there. And that's just what there he got. There was a big ball. There, and pushed it. Yep. <laughs> a lot of action on that deadwood down there. Shows you what that deadwood can do for you when it's working in your favor. That just rolled up the plate there and just nudged it enough to take it over. And he leaves the one seven and the six ten. A piece of wood in there. Uh, he gets on that head pin. It's going to take the three on the right and hopefully the ball. Well, even the head pin could go over and take that seven pin. Right there. Oh, it went over there. Yeah, there, it goes. Did wood. there it goes. And it's oh, almost it enough. Hit it hard enough. So he gets a nine on his strike for 35 on three. Takes his 10 for 45 on four. Good shot. He was right there. Yeah, it was. I think well he did everything played. he wanted to do except knock the corner pin down. Yeah. Hit it good. Jeff Baker with a couple of tens to start his second game. Back on the head pin. Ah, he gets working for him and he leaves the 6 10. I'm sure he was happy to see that one go down. It makes his 
this shot a little easier for him. Hung it off a little bit to the right. Left the six pin. And he's got three tens. One thing about it, no matter how sharp you are, how lucky you are, you don't get them all. <laughs> That's right. But he's been bowling a good game so far today. He's uh, He's been right there in that pocket, just like that shot right there. Back in the pocket again, the wood's gonna roll out. So he's got the, well, he doesn't want that wood there. It isn't gonna hurt him, he has to stay away from it. So just pick off the nine pin. <laughs> just like yeah. a magnet, isn't it? Yeah, it seems to be, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what you don't want, sometimes you hit. I'm sure that once he did hit it, he was, easy. <laughs> he was hoping it was going to come across for him. But yeah. No, he's got four tens. He's, he's all right. He's in good shape. You get your tens, and uh, the spares and strikes will come. And you get that you get that third ball. It's always so easy with that third ball. Barry Peterson has an eight and a spare working for him in this box. Right in the pocket. Wants that corner pin there. You got it. Big nine on its pair for 27 on two. Piece of Should dead be wood. able to slide the, the dead wood right onto that pin. Oh, just drops off. Was just a bit too long for him. Almost anywhere would have taken that. Sometimes you tend to say, well, I got to get way down to the right, and you don't really have to get way down to the right. You could hit it up a little bit and give yourself two inches. And two inches is a lot when you're when you're shooting at a spare. It certainly is, especially when you're that distance away. And he's back with a nice nine. So he's had two nine pin drops in a row. Same pin both times. And he's on and he's it. right on it. So after four in our second game, Miles the Villar 37. Sean Wells, 45, Jeff Baker, 40, and Barry Peterson, 47, and open. Ah, he's got a good shot there. If he can get back on that hit pin, drive everything back onto the wood. such a thing as too much wood. <laughs> After the first game, Miles was uh, seven pins up on Barry for second place. And as it stands right now, uh, Miles is down three pins from Barry for total pinfall. So uh, it's a real close ten. race for that yep. second place. Hasn't had his first mark in this game yet. So he needs to, to pound a big one in there right now. Sure, going to do a lot for his for his confidence and get him fired up for the last half of this this game. Unfortunately, right back in there and punch those two punch out. Those two, the, that's, that, that's the three and the nine pin that goes out like that. And on the other side is the two and the eight. And it's a it's a common break. And yeah. there we go. Two common. <laughs> <laughs> So now you got your work cut out for you. You have to try and get back on that hit pin. You haven't yeah. hit it for the first two balls. It's a, a tough thing to do. And he's there. Oh, nice 10. Beautiful. Real nice Beautiful. 10. It shows that you can come out of it yep. if you hit it yeah, in the right spot. That's what you have to do. You have to go back on that hit pin and hope that you're going to get a lot of pins. And uh, You could pick out one. You could fill a hole either side just as easy. Uh, you could pick out the hit pin. That's all it would go. Or the best course it's just what uh, Miles just showed us take them all so he's 57 on six without a mark Sean and Wells in there with a strike and that's his second strike of the game we come down into this home stretch of this second game I think the boys are starting to realize that they got to get in there and another one oh Ooh. almost double close strike. close close Wobbled it, got it moving a little bit. Yeah, left of that tank corner quite. pin with two woods. Uh, 
If he hits, I think if he hits the 105, he's all right. But he went past it and played the safe one. That's good. Good shot. So well, that's sure two what he had enough in a row now for Sean. Yep. And Sean is 75 on six and open with a spare. There's Jeff starting off with his four tens. And they're working a little bit. Leaves him the one four seven with some. I think just two pieces of wood in back there. Let's see what that does to his shot if he gets over there. Yeah, it was at a bad angle that one that's spinning around there now. So it's always going to shoot over to the side, kick and come back and never, never went in the direction that he wanted it to. And he's gone for another ten, so he's halfway through his game on tens. We've never had 10 tens. No, never. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I, I look over at the board, and there's four people over there with 99 without a mark, and one of those is Jeff's father, George, and Francis Fougere, and Brian Durkee, and Gerald Scott. And I think there's one over. I guess they've taken it off the board over there now, yes. but there was at least one over there. I believe it was Tony Bellavu. Yeah, it that, was. That That's had it was. Been, Tony Bellavu. That they had the had 99. 99 without a mark. So there's only right. ever been five here that's been that close to a, a perfect game without a mark. I've only ever heard of one, and I think it was a fellow by the name of Joe McQuinn up in Cape Breton. Well, that broke the string. So now he's got to so give up the, the record now. He's got here. to give up the, the quest for the perfect game yeah. and get some marks. So Barry Peterson. 47 on four and open with a spare. Gets a little action, has six on his spare, which gives him 53 after four. And after four, that puts Barry in the lead with, uh, with that 53. Or in the lead for this game anyway, He's leading in pinfall. Slides by a couple of times and has to take a six. So he's now 59 on five. Back in that pocket. have had the deadwood on that shot. So he takes a nine for 68. After six, Miles DeViller, 57, Sean Wells, 75 and open, Jeff Baker, 59, and Barry Peterson, 68. Now we've got four boxes to go. thin on that head pin, but uh, comes out with a seven pin drop. Uh, probably split those two and make the front one fly over to the corner. The wood might go there, although I don't think the angle's that good for the corner pin. Oh, ah, well, oh. he got the pin sliding on end over there. Picked off that corner pin, so he, he got the wood to work for him on that one. Uh, the deadwood that was behind the pins, I don't think was the one that worked. I think it was one of the ones that were standing up. Uh, yeah, it hit that side kick hit and the came side back and across. And shot right over yeah. end on end and uh, took the seven pin out. So that's his first mark this game. He's been bowling well. He's only three under without a mark. Right back in the pocket again with a good eight. That's 75 on seven. That puts him right back in contention yeah, again. He, he had the second highest score with 123, so he wants to he wants to keep going, or somebody's going to sneak up on him. And right now, I think that's oh. just what Barry is doing. If you total up those those games, uh, I think Miles might be just slightly behind him. And a nine, and he's 84 on eight. I think after seven, I think Miles, or after six, I'm sorry, I think Miles was down about two pins 
behind Barry be for second now, place. Uh, so. Barry's picked his game up a little bit. And Sean's coming on right now, and that <laughs> that could be the the dark horse in the race here. And a good eight pin drop on his spare. So he's now 83 on six, and he had 116 his first game, so he's hanging tough. Got a good shot on this one, a lot of good wood there. Uh, yeah. and, and Sean has three spare. marks in a row. So that makes all four of them with some bonus money on this round as well. Well, Want to get a little a action from the, right, the pins? Get some slash down there. Got so. five on the mark. Gives him 98 on seven. That could go. Missed little, that head little pin. body twist there didn't help any. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, that puts Sean now in second place in the pinfall. And a nine for 107 on eight. That leaves Barry and and Miles in the position where they have to scramble. It's shaping up to true to fashion here, Bruce. It's going to come down to the last couple of frames, I believe, for for Spent these bigger. bowlers. Still looking for his first mark this game after a big 153, and a lot of time that's the way. You throw a big one and a second one, you think you're doing the same thing, and it doesn't work that way. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> that would have counted. That ball had hit the left-hand corner pin, that would have counted. It would give it any spare. Ball and, went uh, down into the back pit <laughs> there, hit the back drop, and then bounced straight back over top of that pin. So Jeff is 69 on seven. He's got six tens and a nine. As I was saying, uh, you, you throw a big game, 153, and you come back and you're close, you think you're doing, you're throwing the ball the same way, you're, everything seems to be the same, but uh, the pins don't fall the same. Uh, I don't know what it is, it's just uh, parts of, the, of this game that frustrate you. What's that corner pin? He'd give it a kick. That would have made his spare a lot easier. But he's got a piece of wood coming up there now. So let's see what happens to that. Oh, that isn't going to make it any easier for him, that's for sure. So he's got to get up on the, the, the high end of that, the uh, end closest to us on the right. Let's take those three. A little, oh, a little low. Pin just carried around behind those other two and kept right on going. And he's got another 10. So he's 79 after eight without a mark. Barry Peterson, 68 on six. Good pocket in, got a strike. Take a strike. Didn't look like it when it first was <laughs> in there, but the pins worked for him. Get a load on this, that'll put him back up there in contention uh, for that second spot. Uh, well, maybe even the first spot, it's hard to say how. I haven't added them up yet to see how close they were. But the boys are squeezing each other. So a six on that strike, and Barry has 84 on seven. Even Jeff with his big 153 in that first game okay, is. Okay, uh, the whistle blew on that one. He didn't knock any pins down, so he still takes a six. So after eight alleys of the second game, Miles DeViller is 84, Sean Wells 107, Jeff Baker 79, and Barry Peterson 90. We're going to get into these last two frames. It's going to tell us who's going to advance and who isn't. There, you got a good break there. 6'10", piece of wood out front. I think he should be able to stay to just to the right of that dead wood, and it'll take the two right back. But it did. As I started to say there, uh, even with just big 153 in that first game, uh, right now uh, his first place is in jeopardy with uh, a couple of these guys get another mark. Sean right now is, him out there. Sean is 
right in there with him. As far don't as think first control. place is a big worry. As long no, as it's just long as a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least second. And just seven and on his mark. We might remind the people that the the, the top two total pinfall in these in this series will advance into the semifinals. Oh yes. Oh, oh. nice there. He didn't even I don't think he even touched the wood on that one. I think he hit the the edge of the pin and it uh, kicked the bottom out and they just laid over uh, off of the wall and, and took the five pin. Didn't look like he had touched so, uh, it, that's, that's for a, sure. That's a big spare there. He's 111 plus. He certainly needed that to put him back into that into a chance for that second spot. And he got and a four. four. So that gives him 115 and a two game total of 238. Nothing wrong with that. Very respectable. And Sean is sitting there right now at 223 with two boxes to go. And he's getting a break out of that while hitting way down on the right. So he's got the, the one, two, three, and the seven with a piece of wood in behind the three, uh, the two. Uh, pocket hit. A little solid on the head pin, but the wood came back and worked in his favor. Worked in right. his favor. At, uh, that spare may end up hurting somebody else. Yes. <laughs> And a good eight. So 125 on eight. So he's got 241 so far with his box to count yet. Now what he tried to do there was stay on, on the left side or the outside of that pin and make things move off the wall, which they did very slightly. And there's a pin still rolling. So Sean has a good 134 to go with his 116. So Sean is 250 for two. Another very respectable yep. game so here. Sean an average has of 125. One <laughs> now, right at this time, Jeff is only one under par in this game. Uh, Mark here could assure him of first spot. Yeah. He, um, let me see. He's got 232. He wants to get away from that front one. No. And there's his first mark. And, uh, that'll put his mind at ease a little bit, although he was going to be okay, I think. Uh, he had 232, two boxes to go. So now he's 89 and open. Right back in a pocket. He would have needed at least nine in each of these boxes just to uh, stay ahead stay of Sean. Stay ahead of Sean, yeah. So he's 96 on nine, and uh, he's in good shape. Got the two, four, five. And ah, another spare. A little kick, uh, pretty good hit, and a uh, little extra kick helped him there. That gives him one extra ball in his 10th frame to just add a little bit of insurance. And finishes off with a big 18. So 114 to go with Jeff's 153, so that gives him 267 assures him of being in now let's have a look at Barry Barry's 10 he's 26 over par now so he's got to have two big marks two good marks and that is uh, well yes he's got to have two marks he's, he's, he's got to beat Sean's 250 that would, uh, there's a good start toward it that would working for him or, I don't know if I said 260 or 250 I meant 250 yeah Right on it. And a big spare for Barry at this time. So a load and another one. And Barry could put himself in the next round. 16, that's 216. 26, yeah, he could do it. And oh, he gets yes. a real oh, big yes. load on that. 19, that's 109. It's 34, he needs a spare. and. A half a dozen or so on it. Right on it. And that's what he's got. So Barry has two marks in a row there. So he's 119. He's 235 right now. So he needs four on this mark to uh, to eliminate Mark. No, I'm sorry. It isn't going to do it. He had to. I'm all mixed up here. <laughs> uh, so 17, 126, 1, 242. 
No, he needed he needed bigger marks than that. Uh, he was I forgot he had to beat out Sean. I was looking at Wild's score all the time, so he just fell a little bit. He fell eight pins short of uh, qualifying. And, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to mix up the. <laughs> the audience on that, but I was concentrating on an, another score there. So, so anyway, Cliff, after uh, both games here, we're looking at uh, Jeff Baker with 153 and 114 for 267. Uh, second was Sean Wells with 116 and 134 for 250. They will both uh, qualify to uh, advance. Uh, Barry Peterson had 116 and 126 for 242. And Miles Tavilla had 123 and 115 for 238. So we had four good matches there, really. Excellent matches, Bruce. And uh, unfortunately, only two can advance. So Jeff Baker and Sean Wells will advance into the semifinals coming up in four weeks' time. Um, we also have some uh, bonus money. We have an extra $10 to give to Jeff, five for Barry, five for Miles, and five for Sean, which uh, adds to the... Uh, the kitty and uh, help cover their expenses so um, in just a moment we'll be back and we'll uh, bring the two bowlers in that advanced we'll bring in Jeff and and Sean, uh, Sean. so if I'll get rid of this headset and uh, we'll call those bowlers in and uh, present some uh, some uh, money to them yeah and I think Gerald's waiting there to find out how much bonus money you want to okay I'll be right there in one second You had a really good match. Uh, you you seem to come back in that last couple alleys there and and uh, just put yourself right back into contention. How how'd you feel about your game today? Uh, the first game was a little rough there, but after that it wasn't too bad. So. You struggled a little bit through the second game there, but those marks on the end uh, made the difference and uh, put you right back in there for advancement into the semifinals. Uh, how how about that? You looking forward to that? No, not really. <laughs> you think it's going to be a little rough, do you? Yeah. Well, Sean, uh, on behalf of Subway and the Red Knight Enterprises, I'd like to present you with this um, to help you with a little bit of the financial part of it. And uh, congratulations on advancing and looking forward to seeing you in the finals. Thanks. Okay, that was Sean Wells and uh, a fine job by him. Okay, at this time, I'd like to call up Jeff Baker. Uh, Jeff? Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Some little bit of uh, financial reward there for your efforts today. Um, struggled a little bit in that second game, Jeff. Yeah, I, uh, second game was a little touchy there to the last two boxes. I was, uh, Sean was getting a lot and Miles through two going out, so I was kind of lucky to see the uh, those two in the ninth and tenth box go. They had to work uh, at the last end of it. They had to make sure that they came up with some, uh, but the even though the, there was no marks, uh, after halfway through that game, you were still looking at almost a perfect game there. Yeah, I threw the, I missed the nine there in the sixth box. I got the nine, and I wasn't really thinking about that. I'd have much rather had uh, a mark or two up until that point, but, you know, it's kind of tough. Miles goes out with 238 and Barry with 242, so that's, you know, pretty good bowling, but that's a breaks. <laughs> Certainly is, uh, but that 153 really looked nice on the first part, gave you that cushion that you needed, and uh, the last couple of marks really worked for you. Yeah, the 53 starting off takes a little bit of pressure, but then when you don't get a mark until the ninth and 10th box of the, of the last game, you know, you're, you're pushing a little bit, but, uh, you know, it was good, uh, good to get the 153 out of the way first. It was a great round, Jeff. Congratulations. Look forward to meeting you into the semifinals. We'll be back. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, and that wraps it up for this week. We'd like to thank you for watching. We thank our sponsors, Subway and the Red Knight Enterprises, Cable 5, Brunswick Lanes. Hope you've enjoyed this week. Look forward to seeing you next week for a very exciting round of bowling here at Brunswick Lanes. Thank you. See you next week.